Earth. Have you guys heard of Remedy? Does anyone like Max Payne? Alan Wake? I expected people to be very excited about that one. All right, I'm the least cool person on this panel, so let me introduce our fantastic guest. We have Courtney, who is playing the lead character of Control. We have Mikhail, who is the game director. And we have Brooke, who is a narrative designer. She got cool dubs yes. We didn't get that. So, what is Control all about? Oh, wow. Um, Just throwing you right in there. Yeah, <laughs> Control right is it. a third-person action adventure game that is all about um, Jessie Faden, who has had a supernatural event happen in her childhood, mm -hmm. and her brother went missing, was taken by the Federal Bureau of Control. So the game begins with her arriving at the oldest house, um, looking for answers to her past, mm -hmm. um, and instead she finds the director of the bureau dead. She picks up his service weapon and becomes the director of the bureau. But I wish I, that was how jobs I know, <laughs> I, I really That'd be wish, great. <laughs> yeah, wish, wish you could just be selected like that. Like, Amazing. Yeah. Um, so she has to work out what this role means for her, but in the midst of all this, uh, the building has been taken over by a mysterious supernatural force called the Hiss. So it's going to be a little bit spooky. It's going to be a bit unsettling. Okay. Yeah. And for anyone who doesn't already know, the game is coming out in summer, correct? Yes, August 27. All right. Well, we have a video to show you guys. Great. Um, can we roll that? I got the hotline. I can make out what Trench is saying now. Incredible. What did he say? He talked about his management team, people who knew the Bureau of Secrets. Your boss, darling. Tomasi, but he's gone. The hiss got him. Salvador? He's the head of security. And Marshall? Helen Marshall is head of operations. She's tough, ex-CIA. She took her rangers and went to the research sector to secure the HRA production. She hasn't come back. Someone who could help us. The other sectors. How do I get there? It's impossible because of the internal lockdown. You can perform a directorial override to lift it, but that can only be done in the maintenance sector. Normally, you take the sector elevator down there. It connects all the sectors, but it won't work while the lockdown is in effect. We already got past one lockdown. Maybe I can find a way. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. So what's the context of that scene? Like, roughly, where are we in the game? So basically, it's Jesse uh, talking with Emily Pope and trying to kind of figure out what to do next. And uh, basically, Jesse needs to get the management team back together, but she can't do that until she's lifted the internal lockdown within the oldest house. And um, to do that, she needs to go to the maintenance sector. So how much uh, or how many companions is Jesse going to have? Is she mostly solo, or is there a team of people helping her the whole way through the game? As an overall thing, if I go back to when we revealed the game last year, uh, we focused a lot on Jesse, who she is, and the place, and the threat to his, what it does to the building, humans we fight against. And it initially came across as a very kind of a hostile place, obviously. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of conflict and combat. And uh, now that we're getting closer to the release, we want to start showing the human side of control. So there are other people actually in there that mm -hmm. are friendly, that survived this strange event. And um, so there's a number of friendly NPCs that you uh, can meet up. And the first one is actually Emily Pope. And uh, she becomes quite quickly uh, a friend with Jesse, and together they can start figuring this out. Uh, but as Jesse kind of dives deeper into the building, she will find from time to time a number of other interesting characters as well that will help you forward. And hopefully we'll see some of them really soon. Well, let's talk about Jessie. Um, Courtney, you can speak to this. What kind of character is she? What's she all about? Uh, you know, Jessie, she's all about finding the truth. You know, she's, she's had a really rough past. Um, a lot of people that don't necessarily believe in her, which has caused massive trust issues. So it's an internal battle as far as, far as like, you know, whenever she does meet somebody, befriending people. Um, but she really does need allies to figure out, you know, the secrets in which she hopes to 
solve, um, you know, even with her brother and, and finding out more answers and, um, you know, but obviously going through that internal struggle as well. She's super curious and she loves the weird because that's literally been her entire life mm -hmm. is just weird. And so she embraces it. And um, that's something that I really, really respect about her is that, you know, life in general is really weird and a lot of times we run from it, but that's all Jessie really knows. And everyone around her has told her that she's crazy. And I, this is the first time stepping into this house where she actually feels at home. Hmm. I'm here, I'm home, let's figure this out. So obviously there's a lot of weird stuff going on. Uh, would you say she's excited about it? Is she, uh, when we play through it, are we gonna feel like she really wants to experience everything? Like is she as excited as players are going to be basically or is she a little more scared and timid? I think there's a pendulum swing. I think, you know, it's like obviously she just was kind of, kind of dropped into this head, you know, as, as, a, as a director, and it wasn't something that she knew anything about. She doesn't know what she's, she's doing. Um, but in the midst of all of that, yeah, she is excited because it's weird, and she's like, oh, cool, what is this? What, what am I capable of as this director? Um, but at the same time, there's so many things that she doesn't know about. There's mm -hmm. people she doesn't know. And so I think there's just a, a battle between it. And, you know, but she does grow stronger, and you get to kind of experience that, experience that as the game goes on. Yeah. I know, like, you guys are dancing around mysteries, and I'm like, how can I get you to tell me a secret? <laughs> I know. I'm like, still be like, be careful, be careful, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ruin anything. You haven't spoiled anything, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, I guess you alluded to there being, like, a big character arc there. Do you think it's going to be an emotional journey for players, as far as the narrative's concerned? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think to... Uh, with Jessie especially, because she's a closed down character a little bit too, she starts to open up and, and relate to the other characters, like Emily Pope especially. She trusts her a little bit more and tells her a little bit more about her past, which we will see uh, very soon. Um, and yeah, what are your thoughts on that? I mean... Are people going to be sad? Are people going to be sad? It's basically the question. Is, is, um, are we going to be sad? Are we going to be gonna happy? What are the reactions going to be when we're going through the campaign? I feel like one of the goals is, at least f for me, as I was playing Jesse, was to create an empathetic connection between who Jesse is and who the players um, are, because they're experiencing life as Jesse. Mm -hmm. And so that was something that was really important to me and to Sam and to, to all of us, to make sure that she was relatable. Um, and she does go through some, some turmoil and some things that are, you know, hard for her to deal with. So. You know, I, I think that's the goal, is for the players to experience that with Jesse. Yeah. Yeah, and I would just add that what I really like about Jesse is that uh, when she was uh, outside of the bureau, like the previous life that she had, she was and is a kind of a confident person. She, in a way, believes in herself, but still, with everything that she's seen and what she thinks she understands of the world, uh, was different, what people kind of around her thought. Uh, she felt like an outsider. So once she comes to this place, as Courtney said, she kind of feels like coming home. And that gives her this kind of a, kind of a newfound sense of confidence as well. And uh, she is the director now of this mm -hmm. massive organization. And she definitely demonstrates that kind of uh, capacity or capability to do that job, actually. Uh, a huge part of the story is all about Chessie. Uh, getting to grips to what it means to kind of do that work and take that role. And she kind of uh, transitions from wanting to find out what happened to her brother towards kind of understanding what the Bureau does and what's at stake, like related to what's going on in the world and with the supernatural threats. She kind of uh, gets attached and starts to understand the role of the Bureau and taking that role more and more seriously. Mm -hmm. And taking more responsibility and becoming yeah. more of a leader as well. Yeah, I can't imagine just suddenly waking up one day and you're a director, do it. <laughs> like, that seems right. like it'd be a little bit tough. Right. Be a respecter. Yeah, especially when you spent most of your life on your own. You right. Know, where you don't have anybody else and all of a sudden like people are Everyone's looking to you because you you're to be the head of this place and you're like, ah, uh, yeah. figuring out with you. Like, yeah. that's, so. Did you have any like major challenges playing her? Um, not necessarily challenges. It was just, it was really interesting because I just, I really wanted to do justice, bring, you know, bring everything I could to what everyone had created. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd worked with these guys before and, and I just was so excited and, and I wanted to, you know, bring to life this strong female 
woman um, who, female woman, redundant. Um, <laughs> female, strong female <laughs> she's woman. She's a strong female woman. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and I and I wanted, but I wanted to make her human. It was yeah. more about you know, um, really just digging deep and creating this this story of what she went through and really flushing that out so that I could bring to life you know everything that I wanted to. Which I would say, if there was a challenge, it was just you know with games you you writing it as you go. And so mm -hmm. you know I I create this whole thing and then they'd be like actually. You know, this this is how this is now, and so it's so I feel like that it was kind of run and gun in a lot of yeah, ways. Yeah, and I know a so lot of people don't yeah. realize how uh, voices for video games are recorded, and I'm not sure if it was the same for you, but a lot of the time you don't even get to read the whole script. You just get put in a booth, and then you're told to read lines, and you don't really know what's going to end up happening, which can be pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Like I would get there, and there were characters I didn't even know. I'm like, I, I don't know who this is. Who yeah. am I talking to? And then we go through a briefing of it, and I create it really quickly in my mind. And then yeah, it's not easy. No, and then the person's not there either. So then you know I would come back, you know, three weeks later, a couple months later, with that person had recorded everything, and then what I had recorded, it didn't really match. It wasn't a flowing symbiotic Something you know relationship and a conversation and all this stuff so I had to uh, go back and you know uh, uh, make sure that it flushed out it's like okay so now what do we create which is fun I feel like oh, I'm yeah. very thankful to be a part of that because it's like you know we're all working That's together and to create the assistant. best thing we possibly could so. yeah and I imagine it's really satisfying when you're in a booth and you know the team's telling you how to do a line read and you hear and you know it's right and it just sounds awesome and it sounds like the character and everyone's like you've brought this character to life we've finally done it that must be an awesome feeling yeah it's a great feeling from our end too, like when yeah. Courtney brings her performance to you know the words that we've written down, right. <laughs> it really adds a whole new dimension to it. And because the oldest house is a very strange place, that grounded character is really important for the player to yeah. be with. So Jessie's uncovering these things with the player as they go, mm -hmm. and so her very human, grounded performance gives players that base to then leap into the mysterious and the unexplained. So I yeah. think that's really important too. Just Remedy yeah. as a whole is very, very good at making iconic characters that are very relatable. Um, were there any specific inspirations for Jesse or like how did you build the character? Um, so I remember when me and Sam were concepting the game and think, like figuring out, you know, the oldest house and the beer and all of that stuff. And we actually tackled the idea of who the protagonist is relatively late. Uh, but then it was probably one of the easiest decisions we had once it came up that Courtney could be a good option for this. And as you know, Courtney mentioned, we worked with her in Quantum Break. And, uh, she was Beth Wilder, who had probably one of the most, let's say, complex arcs mm -hmm. in that experience. And it was very tragic and so on. And uh, we knew immediately that she is the perfect person for this. So it didn't necessarily go from a place of this is the character that we want and then let's find the right mm -hmm. actress for that. It was more about Courtney is the right one and she'll kind of make that role work. It's got to be a huge compliment. Yeah, thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> they basically built a character around you. That's awesome. But yeah. I think that we're seeing some gameplay now. Right. Uh, how far through the game is this? So this is mission three. Okay. This is the maintenance sector. Um, like we said before, Jessie has to lift the internal lockdown, so she needs to go here. Um, we saw a character before, Arti. He's the mysterious janitor of the oldest house, and he's given her um, some information about how to lift the lock. And she needs to fix the coolant pumps and um, sort out the electricity. Of course, we've all been there. <laughs> in the building, Basic stuff. yeah. Um, and so down here, she'll meet security chief Arish as well. One of the things we really wanted to showcase is the other uh, characters who are in and around Jesse and in the oldest house itself. Um, and here is Man, here's him hey. now. Here we go. Yeah. Chief Arish, FBC security. Shouldn't you be in a safe room? They all have HRAs. The lighting's really pretty. We're on the same side. I feel like it makes it extra spooky. My name Thank is Jesse Faden. Yeah. Uh, the, I'm here to perform um, the directorial our, override uh, to get the lockdown lifted. In general, is yeah, yeah. Chief Arish, they FBC put a lot security. of attention to the lighting, the VFX, oh, the um, even the sound. Like the oldest house kind it's of sounds like it's moving Man. all the time. Let's skip the formalities, um, please. I feel like this one specifically, <laughs> they would have been able to be very, very creative. Look, I imagine, you know, <laughs> as we get further into exactly. the house, just, this stuff just shifts the way it looks ground, the whole way through. Whatever's gotten yeah, into I mean, and colour means a lot in, in the game as well, so the, the, the hits are associated with that red light, yeah. um, which is uh, interesting because the hits are like a resonance, oh, they're a, a sound-based. 
It's what we call the power uh, plant. Kind of entity. The, uh, so kind of being able to capture thing. that in the environment. Uh, I Salvador think had a security asked me to protect job. it in yeah. case of an attack. And I know so this is such a cliche, but it seems very fitting for the game that uh, the setting is almost a character in itself. I think. No, it came down a few days ago. Can we talk a little bit more about what it is? Like what or how is it concepted? And about is there any tidbits you can give me that people should be really excited to see? Mm -hmm. that it um, the oldest house Still, is a place of power. Mm -hmm. um, um, it is a strange, left. infinite did building that the Bureau has off? set up <laughs> shop <laughs> in, basically. <laughs> um, oh, and uh, it's the, our world Listen, director drew on uh, brutalism to design the inside of the house. There's very sharp lines, very stark, very Spartan areas that this bureaucratic organisation is trying to study supernatural yeah. phenomena inside mm -hmm. of yes. and one of the Call things them. that um, also good. speaks to Jesse's oh, character listen, design as well is because so she walks in off the street she's a stark contrast to that environment sure as well true. so yeah I'll and you, you have one. a good way of explaining I'm the sure oldest house as well <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. as a concept right I mean it was important for us that because when you start playing the game you basically within 10 minutes uh, you enter the building and realize something is wrong. Oh. And within 10 minutes, you become the director of this organization mm -hmm. that you barely knew about, and Do you learn about this his, this strange guy? force. <laughs> so it was important for us My because you're thrown into this strange, weird Do experience that there is uh, a somewhat physical, else. relatable I mean, environment, this kind well, of a strange, retro, brutalistic environment that is uh, simple in a kind of a deceptive way, maybe. Mm -hmm. And um, having that sense of clarity and honesty in that environment was important because then we layer on top of that all these kind of a supernatural elements, uh, his corrupting the place, warping the environment itself, or taking over these humans and transforming them in this creepy, unsettling way. And um, so it's the perfect setup for this. And of course, we have a very kind of uh, physics-based gameplay. So it's just fun to destroy concrete and wood and glass and so on. And that's what brutalism is all about, and kind of honest materials and so on. Yeah, the house itself shifts as well. So part of the gameplay is you cleanse and uh, push his out of control points, which is sort of grounding points in the building. And so that um, the building then shifts back to normal and then allows you to progress. Ooh. So the 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 building itself opens up over time as you find more of these control points. Um, which once you lift the lockdown in this mission, um, the game really opens up. So then you can go to different places in the oldest house, like uh, other sectors that we have. We've shown the research sector before in other demos. How um, which linear a, is it? Pardon? How linear is it? Like How linear? Yeah. Um, it's it's open ended, okay. so um, you can return to places um, that you've been before and have um, story moments with characters where you ask them more questions about the oldest house. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you um, it's not complete. It, as you get abilities like levitate, for example, you can access higher areas. So okay. you might have been through a space before, but now you can get to other places. A so Metroidvania, I Metroidvania see. style, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Everyone loves hearing that. Like more Metroidvania. More Metroidvania. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I'm noticing even in this gameplay is the it's scale. It looks like the yeah. building is huge. Yeah, like look at yeah. The camera's pretty far back, yes. uh, making it look like she's really small. Is that an intentional design decision? Um, yeah, I mean sometimes we want to um, use scale to kind of uh, like demonstrate how small you are as a human being sometimes in mm. this environment. So there's this oppressive fields in certain environments. Um, another metaphor that I sometimes use about the oldest house is it's almost like a human body. So it can change and grow and do all kinds of things. And what has now happened is that this is it's almost like a disease that has infected and warped that. Okay. And what Jesse actually can do is blend uh, aspects of the building and we actually have a control point nearby. Let's see if someone manages oh, to get yeah. through this combat so we get to see the cleansing uh, that will happen. Uh, as Jessie, Jessie needs to defeat all the uh, enemies first before she can do it. Right. And once she does that cleansing, it allows the building to kind of uh, restore its former shape, basically. Mm. And, um, and cleansing is also a thing that Jesse can do uh, to opposite power. We'll see if we kind of find some of this later on. But basically, that allows Jesse to um, kind of um, 
bind these objects to herself. Here we see a building This game's so ship. cool, you yeah. guys. This <laughs> game is so cool. Yeah. It just looks the awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Really yeah. uh, proud of that. I mean, fantastic job, our VFX team. Yeah, yeah they're honestly, incredible. Honestly, like world-class people. It's, it's amazing what Obviously, we've just yeah. seen a little bit of combat. And I know yes. that, you know, when it was revealed, people seem really excited about that because it's very creative. Mm -hmm. And as we learn more and more, it seems like there are a lot of different abilities and different ways to approach environments. Would you say that's right? Yes. Um, so you, as you gain uh, different abilities over time, you gain evade, which allows you to effectively dodge out the way. You get levitate, which allows mm -hmm. you to float. You get shield, which you bring in, uh, objects in the environment around you, which allows you to get closer to enemies, and then you can upgrade those abilities to get um, extra perks, so to okay. speak. So you could like throw your shield forward to deal damage. But um, we, need we to fix this have thing ASAP. balanced the way that you use abilities and gunplay as well. Mm -hmm. So because the service wep weapon is a shifting kind of weapon, you can have different uh, weapon types. Yep. Um, and then you can choose then how to use, like, how you use your abilities to approach the enemies and which gun forms you use to do that. Yeah. It was important for us that there is this feeling of uh, growing strong yeah. as, as you go through this experience. Chessie learns a lot and she binds these objects to herself, uh, learning new abilities and uh, she can find a number of materials from the environment allowing her to unlock more different forms in her shape-shifting uh, service weapon. And uh, yes, there are modifications as well that you can find that allow you to be more kind of, they amplify your abilities, they amplify different aspects of the weapon itself. Okay. I feel like I could talk to you guys about this game for like several hours more and somehow we already I only have two minutes left and I'm like, but oh. don't make it stop. <laughs> but that does mean we have another clip to show everyone who's here um, before we end the panel. So oh yeah, we have, we have one more video. Yeah, what's that going to be? Uh, that will be another conversation with Emily Pope. Okay, yeah. let's, uh, let's check that out. Listen, Emily. Screw it. Just tell her. I haven't been completely honest. I have a younger brother, Dylan. When we were kids, we found an old slide projector in Ordinary's landfill. The slides created doorways to other places. Bad things happened. Came through. That's all she gets. The rest stays locked inside. But we found help. Through one of the doorways, we met something. A being. A being? What kind of being? It's hard to describe, but it... She helped us. We managed to turn the projector off. The bad things that came through the doorways were gone. After that, your people came and tried to grab us. I ran away. They got Dylan. I left him behind. Bureau agents took your brother? Yes. You covered it up. No one believed me. I just want to find Dylan. I've been looking for him ever since. So much mystery. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are officially out of time. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And I cannot wait to actually play the game myself. Thank you, guys. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>